Well, the first one got 1984. Well, then there's one coming out in the 90s. There's like four of them now. I think there's another one coming out, too. That's all. My kids are all. My boys are pumped up, so I'm like, hey, we're going to the booth. Oh, there's a new Star Wars guy. I didn't get into that. Are you just going to call us? I like their ideas, but I haven't watched it. I haven't done the first three. I haven't watched any of them. Well, somebody told me it's like they did the first three, and then like you know how they came out to the next three, you know, like six years ago. But those are supposed to be in the timeline before the first three. He was pretty much the first one. It says part three years, part four, whatever. Something happened. You watch the first. You mean the first one? The first one. Yeah, the very first one. Does anyone need a copy of these? Maybe. I'm going to take these. All right, then I need someone who knows how to work at a copy machine. <laughs> right now it's scanning, and it's not like mine. Any takers? I'll try. I'll try. I got it warmed up. It could be worse, I promise you. <laughs> I told you that I could show out almost 65 minutes ago. This is what you're going to get. It ain't going to change. Please say it like that. It's Saturday night's what I heard. I had not heard that. I had not heard that. He's been in the hospital for last few weeks. I'm going to have another one of the other ones. I'm going to have another one of the other ones. 
Yeah. 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 Some of the lot of stuff won't be good with it. All right, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Call the meeting to order the March 18th meeting of Spencer County Fiscal Court. Welcome everyone in the audience uh, with us tonight. Uh, Jim, if you would, would you open in a word of prayer, please? I will. Father God in heaven, we thank you for another day of life you've given us. We thank you for all the blessings you give us each and every day. And as we always do, we thank you uh, for everyone present here tonight. And be with this court as we make decisions for the county. And we pray that we'll use your wisdom and your guidance to make our decisions. And we pray that those decisions will be correct. Father, we ask you to be with this county as uh, we're getting ready to celebrate our centennial celebration. And, and, and all that. And just be with the state and, and the federal leaders. And just give them the wisdom to make the decisions we need to keep this country going in the direction that it needs to go. And Father, we uh, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for forgiveness of our sins. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 If you would, join me in the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, all. Uh, Madam Clark, if you would call the roll, please. Squire Stump. Here. Squire Harris. Here. Squire Elder. Here. Squire Travis. Here. Squire Travis. Here. Squire Cotton. Here. All right, everyone's here. All right, I'm going to try something tonight a little different than we usually do. I'm going to try to hustle the meeting along where it doesn't take three hours. Whoopee. So, if, if I kind of do this, that means let's try to, let's try to hustle along. And y'all can knock to and say, hey, judge. But, yeah. but just to, I know last meeting I thought would have been a little shorter than it was and it went longer than I thought. But. Well, an hour and a half is, a, is supposed to be a perfect meeting. So that's been my goal all along, and I haven't reached that goal, but I'm going to really try harder. So, no disrespect to anyone. Anyone. But we're just going to, going to try to move it along a little better. Oh, you're fired up. You're tapping already. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. So, um, so like I say, no disrespect. Um, First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, I went through them. I didn't see anything that that I wanted to change. Uh, I just I had one question on pages 16 through 28. These numbers are impossible to read, and I don't know if I think it's between copy in. I don't know why, but like if, if we look at the, the numbers that we have coming up in this meeting they're very they're very legible and then these numbers I mean I it's tough reading the words and it's nearly impossible reading the numbers you got to guess at them so I don't know how we can fix those when you have them on the page sideways they're a lot easier to read when they're in the minutes sideways rather than this way they're easier to read and this is a compressed file every time I try to scan from a compressed file, I get this. It looks dirty. Yeah. So yeah. If, if they want to put them in sideways like y'all were doing for a while there, that seemed to work pretty well. I'm scanning them exactly like I'm getting them, so I don't know why it's so small. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. Okay. But like these right here, I mean, they're perfectly, you know, anyone can read these and make them out. And uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, Jake brought up wrong two on the minutes. You had a date? I had March 5th. March 4th. Okay. Yep. Okay. March 4th. Yes. All right. We need to make that correction for sure. <coughs> Motion to approve the minutes with the recommended changes. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion by Zach, seconded by Dan, to approve the minutes with the changes mentioned. Uh, any questions? Any uh, discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda, the uh, where, where we said our uh, application submitted for the recycling trailers. Uh, we got some bids, and then we have to send in the bids, and then to get approved for the grant, and then we can buy the trailers in July, right, Doug? Yeah, next fiscal year. So, uh, and I'm sorry, I don't have some of those bids, but uh, uh, Karen picked out the ones that works the best. So we're just gonna go with that. If y'all good with that, and we'll we'll bring you numbers uh, as we move along. Uh, next on the agenda, Andrew is the uh, sheriff's office. And uh, we, we've had some discussions uh, since the last meeting, so Andrew wanted to make a presentation. Okay. You want to make sure Jimmy was? Uh, all I got is, I got the front page. That's all. Okay. Uh, this report here is uh, based off of Kentucky Ops. In Kentucky Ops is the uh, data reporting system that law enforcement across Kentucky uses, excluding. Uh, like Metro and Lexington. So anytime a, an officer, a deputy, a trooper creates a citation, does an accident report, a diver's report, that's a, a case report, um, it gets mapped. So, and this is the data that's being mapped and presented from Kentucky Ops, if that makes any sense. Um, all right. Um, so here you have like this is some injury accidents. The red is going to be fatality, gray is injury, and uh, yellow is property damage. So property damage is going to be an accident where there was no injury reported, but you know you got vehicle damage, you have someone's fence, their property, that sort of thing. All right, that is the map created for 2020. Uh, looking at 236 accidents uh, as you can tell the, the gray is going to be your injury the yellow is your not injury and uh, the map somewhat stays the same it's always there They're generally always kind of compiled in this area of the hell creek uh, that's probably where you see the most and it's kind of all throughout kind of the centralized part of the county Uh, 2020 fatal accidents, uh, there was uh, two reported in 2020, and that's where those generate on the map. Uh, This is uh, 2014, this is a 10-year 
data pool for fatality accidents. Uh, so you see all, all those uh, green, green pin dots there are where the fatals occurred in the county. <coughs> The vast majority of those is in the Elk Creek area. Um, I know there's been a lot of their thing, the, the fatals we've had here recently in Jefferson County on 155. There's been a lot of talk of, about those fatalities. Uh, the vast majority of our fatalities are in, in Elk Creek. Um, I, can pull, I can break this data down. I can have a, a four hour presentation on this, you can break it down a lot. And I can actually click on those pin dots and read the report and see what the you know what the report says, what those accidents were. Uh, a lot of our fatalities, I think the majority of them are single vehicle, we have a lot of single vehicle fatalities. Uh, speaking of the ones in the Elk Creek area, we have some rear end, severe rear end accidents cause fatalities, we have some alcohol, drug involvement fatalities. Um, I think the only one on the 155-55 corridor where we actually had a vehicle overtaking uh, was on 55 uh, prior to Elk Creek, and that was another I think, a contributing factor of drugs, drug involvement. Um, I'd like to get a copy of that slide and <coughs> read it to uh, so when I go to KIPTA and I go down to District 5 transportation, uh, I mean, when we argue about road improvements, yeah. the, the number of fatalities plays a factor. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. This is something I kind of want to do since I've, I've gotten here because I feel like there's always been a lot of misconception on a lot of this stuff. And uh, I hope we can continue this in the future and just come together as a team. And look at this data, and we can make improvements in the county and, and things like that. That's why that's my, my hope. Is. So, all right, now we're going to the citations. So this is traffic citations. This is not traffic stops; it's traffic citations. So, for an officer or deputy, this is just this is just sheriff's office data here. Uh, when, a, when our deputies create a citation, this is 2023. So that's where all of our citations for last year. Uh, we're done there, unless there was a, a paper citation, but I don't, we don't create very many paper citations anymore at all. So that's your uh, 2023 data on uh, traffic citations that were issued. All right, this is where we're at at 2024. We're at 419 traffic citations. So we uh, go back to last year, we were 689 for the entire year. And we're currently on, as of today, we're at 419 traffic stop citations. Uh, and you gotta look at, you know, we, might, we got another guy out of Academy last year, we got a new hire on. So we're kind of back to <coughs> full staff, a uh, minimum full staff. I still think our numbers really aren't quite there yet as far as manpower. But that's where we're at now as of March. Um, I can tell you, I can also look at other counties. Uh, we're on par with Bullock County right now as far as total cit citations issued. Uh, so you're looking at a, an agency with or a county with 90,000 some citizens. I'm not sure how many more deputies they have than us, than us, but I'd say it's pretty substantial. And uh, our citations are actually a little greater than that. Uh, calls for service and traffic stops. 2023 calls for service were 3838, 2024. Uh, our total traffic stop was 774. So that's your total number. That number is generated from the CAD system with KSP. The reason why I can't give you the 2023 data is somewhere, I think by the time I came on, uh, KSP changed their CAD system. 
So they can only really go back to start uh, the new CAD system. So anytime a, um, a deputy officer, whoever radios in a traffic stop, that gets recorded. So from January 1 to till current date, we're at 774 traffic stops. Uh, calls for service, we're at 1629. So we're at 1,629 calls for service. What is today's date? March 17, 18, 18. Uh, You look at, we're at 38, 38 calls for service last year. So you can see we're, we're trending higher this year than, than last year. Uh, let's see. So 774 traffic stops this year. 419 of those resulted in citations. This is a list of charges for violations for this year. Uh, I know it's kind of small, it's hard to get on the PowerPoint. But for those 419 citations that were issued, it resulted in 823 violations. So there was eight, 823 charges that went with those 419 citations. And they range from uh, Anywhere from uh, registration plates, uh, vast majority of them are speeding, uh, all various speeds from as little as seven miles per hour over the speed limit to as high as you know 26 miles an hour or greater. Uh, pretty much this whole section here is from here. All that is your speeding, your drug charges, your alcohol. Uh, <coughs> and I got I got some printouts on this stuff I can pass out. There's 113 with no registration. Yeah. For sure. You got some good news to see that. <laughs> and that could be like expired time and stuff like that. All right. Uh, this is uh, just an update on the flock. This is kind of what we're looking at right now on the uh, lock system. I met with, uh, last week I met with City Council, I presented to City, city Council. Uh, city Council is on board with two cameras. I also met with uh, the schools. The schools is uh, <coughs> going to pick up two cameras as well. So, all together we'll have six cameras and we're working on trying to pass the broader net as we can to cover as much of the county as we can. Uh, and this was a map that was presented by Flock. So I guess I can use this computer right here to make it easier. This area up here, if you can see the mouse, um, that's going to be 155, the Spencer Jefferson County line inbound. Uh, we're looking at putting one closer in the Elk Creek area, you know, kind of that intersection where we get all that exchange from Shelby County. Um, looking at 55 out that area from Shelby County, Bloomfield Road, and uh, we're trying to cover as much as we can of the 44, the four lane, inbound and outbound uh, with those six cameras. Now, uh, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, Sunday we met with uh, Global Crossing. They had their annual uh, meeting at Spencer Christian Church. They pretty much built a sanctuary. Uh, they go. They had their vote for the uh, camera system, the clock cameras. Uh, we presented to them. Had a lot of good discussion. And uh, Global Crossing uh, voted voted yes on the cameras. So they are also coming on board with uh, I think it's two or three cameras, three three cameras. And those cameras will be like covering their entrances to your subdivision. And that that I'm sorry to interrupt. That data will be. Stream straight to our computers. Yeah, I guess we'll share with those surrounding areas. Yeah. Kind of basically get the nutshell. So. All right. Questions? Any, any questions for Andrew or Scott? Do you have it broken down on the number of citations that are given from, let's just say, 55 and 155 in Elk Creek to the Jefferson County line? I can do that. Specifically that yep. area? I can do that. Um, I, could, I could actually show you 
I mean, you don't have to do it now. I can you, show you actual meeting. I can, I can break it down a lot of ways. Let me see. Let me put this. Which, I'll pull this back. <coughs> you won't be able to count one. Because, you know, all the, I've had several calls this week on this week, prior. I've had more that, uh, concerned about the speed in the reckless driving. Basically from 55 to the Jefferson County line. Correct. Through there. And you can see how they're they're stacked there. And I will say from my experience, you know, I started my career here in 2011. 55 and 155 has got to be the most highly patrolled roadways. Or it's just always been that way. That's where you have all your, that's your greater speeds. It's an easier place for us to run radar and uh, catch speeders is out there at 55 and uh, 155. It's always, it's always been an issue. Uh, I feel like you know a lot. Of, it's a good roadway. It's just too much traffic for that smaller roadways, in my opinion. Now um, I don't know what the you know the correct answer to that is. I mean, you see that the very vast majority of speed citations is. I mean, it pretty much draws it out for you on those uh, pin dots, but I can I can break it down uh, a lot of different ways. Um, Trying to think, and you also got to figure this is January one till March seventeenth. Michael, you can agree, probably agree with me on this too. The winter months is probably your slower, your slower inclement inclement yeah. weather, nasty weather. You know, it's it's harder for officers, deputies, troopers. You know, we don't want to create even more hazardous condition by trying to, you know, make it dangerous and pull somebody over in dangerous conditions. Radars don't work and uh, you know, heavy rains and stuff like that. So I can always perceive these numbers going up as the weather gets nicer and you know, people tend to drive faster. Uh, there's more people on the roadways. When the motor is going to be yep, more people going over the lake. That's going to be a lot more uh, traveling when the, when the weather when the weather gets better. So I mean, it's that's a pretty uh, pretty staggering number to me. I was kind of I was kind of surprised to see just how many it was. I, I felt when I came from even from Shelby County, I said, "Man, we brought a lot of citations." People were saying that we're not brought enough citations. I thought we were brought more in Shelby County. Um, citations. Is a piece of the puzzle, um, but there's more to the puzzle than just citations. Uh, I still feel like you know officer presence is a big part of that puzzle as well. And you take you know a couple of deputies covering 192 square miles of our county. They're doing a they're doing a pretty good job. They're, they're doing their best. I mean that's. You got to think, while they're doing all that, they're still taking felony reports, they're still taking accident reports, they're still doing all the other things that come along and gets put at our feet to uh, take care of. Uh, so I don't want to keep rambling. So. Hey, you all have any more <coughs> questions for the sheriff or the deputy sheriff? Yeah, I did have a couple more comments I'd like to make. Uh, you know, it, 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 from the phone calls that I get and from people that are calling and telling me, you know, with all your efforts that you're doing, it still doesn't seem like it's curtailing the, what's going on. You know, it still hasn't seemed like it's slowed down the complaints. Um, That's where I feel like they get more officer presence, more people seeing them in their way. Did, That's did not, you, you know, I sent, I sent uh, Scott and your guys email today with just suggestions about, can you, you know, maybe make a media blitz out of this thing. You know, I mean, there was a news uh, cast not long ago saying that that stretch of highway was one of the most dangerous in the state. Well, I'm sure it is. And, and that was stated on the news. And, you know, uh, I know uh, Louisville Metro's put one of the speed limit trailers out there also. And, but, you know, uh, the Kentucky State Police, Taylorsville, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, uh, LMPD, and you guys come up with a with a formula where y'all can run this radar uh, consistently a couple times a week that whole stretch of road at the same time where you are coordinating together. And and then when and like I said, like Scott said, when you take money out of people's pockets, that's when you start 
seeing some some difference. You know, he mentioned that the last meeting, he got, uh, one man got three speeding tickets and his wife got one. He's probably sure they're changing their driving habits. Well, I think that's maybe what we need to do here is maybe uh, do a blitz out there, you know, uh, for a couple of weeks and let the people know, you know, uh, put it on your Facebook pages and uh, in the Spencer Magnet letter right? say, this is what's going to happen, guys. You know, so don't be surprised when you, when you get pulled over and get a ticket for speed. Right. And, uh, and may, maybe go that route a little bit further than what you're going. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually forgot one thing. I'd, uh, I'd spoke with Pullman Metro. Uh, when, I, when I was in the reconstruction at Shelby County, I made a lot of contacts throughout the Commonwealth. So I actually know one of the sergeants that does deal with the traffic unit. Reconstruction unit, so they're the ones that goes out there with reconstruction those fatalities in Jefferson County. <coughs> uh, we're going to get together and try to put some details together on the Jefferson Spencer County Inn. Uh, and then we'll probably advertise somewhat. Uh, we discussed uh, some speed machines. Uh, I'm sure some of their speed machines out there. I guess they're different than the actual traffic truck that's out there. Uh, the speed machines will uh, share going speed and get averages and all that sort of thing so we're, we're talking about uh doing that and then doing some kind of blitz for a couple of days between our deputies ksp and uh and metro um and i'm gonna get with uh, post 12 and see if uh we get them on board i'm sure they'll is, is there any equipment out there that will like your your flashing speed limit signs that can take pictures of license plates and log the speed limit it's illegal. I have a question. Yeah. There, and the there is a bill right now to try to get that implemented in Kentucky. Tennessee has it. They'll take it for your license plate. Take it your car. Yeah, yeah take it your car. It take it yeah, it's a, that's a sticky situation. That's where yeah. you know your girlfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, or whoever's driving your vehicle, and you get the, you know whoever the vehicle's registered to. You know, the time you take it. <laughs> or if somebody fails to transfer to get in. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take off a further lead. You know, if somebody's they spilled to transfer your vehicle and they're out speeding in it. Uh, Let me start on river one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, I hate to see it get to that point. Like I said, I don't I still don't know citations is a big piece of the phone. I promise. I mean it is. But there's there's still more to it. There's still more contributing factors than just citations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people got to drive smarter. I, I like to know just how many of these accidents, injury, non-injury, uh, contributing factors to cell phone. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot more distractions in the vehicles now than there were 15 years ago. Uh, the vehicles are a lot smoother, quieter, faster. I mean, it's, it's easy to get up 70, 80 miles an hour and not realize it in these, you know, in a brand new vehicle uh, versus your granddaddy's jalopy from, you know, the 70s. So, hey. I'd like to, I'd like hey. to applaud you on 419 citations in three months. I appreciate it. I mean, it's, that's getting after it. That's all the uh, same thing. The guys are, the guys are working hard, and, that, and that's, that's the results of a young officer, younger officers, you know, the guy that's, just come out of the academy, you know, two or three years on, that's, you know, they're about to change the world when they come out of the academy. I can remember when I came out of the academy myself. So. Um, Do you have a breakdown of, like, the number of warnings that you give that you don't write citations? He can give you one, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was getting at back here, as far as... That's 419 traffic citations for 2020. It's about 700, the number of 700, something yeah. like that. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> right here. Yeah. 777 stops. 774 traffic stops. And that's all it gets, you know, when you radio in traffic stop, that gets recorded by Post 12 Dispatch. So there's 774 traffic stops. That's three some. And then there was uh, 419 citations from those 700. Uh, if I could say something about doing this blitz, I'm all for it. But I want you to understand that many times it's next to impossible for us to get turned to go after the vehicle that's speeding. 
it's, we create more of a hazard than anything. I wrote a citation the other day to a lady, she's running 72. She went by me and I had to let like six or seven cars clear out before, and I turned on my blue lights finally to get the traffic stopped long enough to turn on her. I had to chase her two miles to catch up, and I wrote her a citation. Uh, and Officer Long was out uh, at Loop Road here just recently, and uh, writing someone a citation for speeding, and two cars come down the road and they were so enthralled about looking at the bikes and not paying attention to what they're doing. Error in accident right there in front of them. You know, so us trying to help sometimes will actually create issues. So if we put 10 cops out there and we're just running wild and writing tickets, we'll try it. But don't be surprised if there's accidents created by it. And like they say, sometimes you just can't fix stupid. And, you know, people just are going to do what they do, and we're going to try our best to help it. Uh, but I think, you know, media blitz, I think that's a great idea. You know, uh, you know we're not going to prevent all of it ever, and I wish we could. I wish I knew what the magic answer was. Uh, when I worked for Fish and Wildlife, my captain said, you need to be on that water in case there's an accident. Well, a lot of times I'd be closer to the accident or quicker to the accident by driving by road. And I told him, I said, he said, no, you've got to be on the water. I said, well, you tell me where the next boat accident is going to happen, and I'll go there and sit and wait for it. Same thing with this. If we know where the next wreck is going to happen, we'll sit there and wait for it to happen. But we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. So I appreciate y'all's input. And like I, I've said many times, I would love for you to come and ride with us. I did it three times, and I'm going to say it's last Wednesday. I, don't know. I went to the county line and drove back to Texas three times. And this was around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The fastest vehicle I clocked was 64. So that time of the day wasn't a lot of speeding. Early in the morning, late in the afternoon, there's not a lot of speeding because they're in chunks. They come in chunks, and everybody's pacing each other. Now, you've got the one crazy person that passes five and six cars. That's the guy I'd really love to get out of there. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. Is well, the thing it. about it, catching it, and, and I want you, and I, I don't want to call anybody that they're not telling the truth, but one thing I told my officers at Fish and Wildlife when I was tra trained them, if someone calls out, they've got 10 people hunting on them, cut it in half right off the top, and then cut it in half again, and there's maybe two or three guys there. People like to exaggerate. I don't know why, but they do. You know, uh, people will say, uh, I, that guy passed five cars, and he probably passed two. You know, uh, it's, but is there a problem out there? Absolutely. And, and you know, we'll take suggestions all day long. Uh, I misspoke last time. I said that you, you, we don't stop somebody until they're over 70. What I should have said is when we stop somebody over 70, they're definitely getting a ticket. You know, it's, it's no question. When they're over 70, they're getting a ticket. Uh, I mean, just by the report there, I mean, all the way down to seven mile an hour, you know. Uh, and, and there's officer discretion. You have to look at the totality of the whole situation. What's going on in those live, people's lives? Why were they speeding? What was going on? I wrote the citation to the other day. She just flat out said, I wasn't paying attention. I was running too fast. I'm going to work. And she's very nice about it. You know, of course, everybody's not nice about it when you give them a citation. There's no way to give a citation to everyone and everybody be happy about it. I don't blame them. I, I, I wouldn't like them either. But, you know, keep giving us ideas. But I would love for y'all to do ride-alongs with us so you're not guessing what we're doing. You're actually seeing what's happening. And, and when I first started the sheriff, I thought I could go out there at 6 o'clock in the morning and write citations all day long. It doesn't work that way because of it's almost funny to watch. It's like a group of ants coming along, and then here comes another group of ants going the other way. And they're in chunks, and you know, it, it, there's not that much speeding. If it's, it's the it's a peak traffic times, there's not the amount of speeding you think just because the road's not open enough to do it. If you get any more questions, you know, just let us know. Andrew's done one heck of a job, and he's worked hard on it, him and Myra both. And, uh, just keep us informed and we'll do everything we can to help you. Y'all ready to go? All right.
We'll move on. Uh, I passed around a paper here that looks like this one. Uh, it's a CASA. And I learned a little more about that it's a court appointed special advocates. Uh, we were asked for a donation last year, and it, well, of course, it was made out to the previous judge, and they, this one was correct. And uh, but after I got to figuring a little more about it, uh, this is something that's really, really important. And they were asking for a thousand dollar donation. What it is, uh, like the, the front, the first paragraph there, uh, talking about uh, what, what it does. It pairs a uh, advocate with the family with the child to get the best interests of the children. And I'm sure Corey and Cheryl could probably attest to how important this is. So I was going to present it to you guys if you'd like to uh, donate $1,000 for the CASA program. So moved. All right. There's a, all right, we got a motion by Mike, seconded by Zach to approve a $1,000 donation to the CASA, the Court Appointed Special Advocates. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, next, I handed out some uh, jail budget numbers. Uh, Doug and myself and uh, Katie, our finance officer, and the jailer, uh, Daryl Herndon. We discussed several uh, uh, different numbers and so forth, and uh, he has to present his numbers to us. We don't have to vote on these tonight. Uh, but they will uh, implement, be implemented into the budget that I'll present to you guys here real soon, maybe a month, month and a half, something like that. So just wanted to give give that to you. If you all have any questions about any of that, uh, we can ask them tonight or you can call me anytime or come see us and we'll discuss it. One quick question. Yeah. Are these, no, did you, did, is this yours? Did you put this together? Thanks. Yeah. No. The four of us. Is it is this town like I know we was talking about the prices going up over at Shelby County and then we talked about <coughs> Well this gold. is based on thirty five dollars a day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because uh, we can't afford fifteen dollars a day and I've got three other right. jails that says they will house five. In fact I got one of the contracts today signed by their judge, the other two working on getting it taken care of. The worst part about it is no one jail can house all their inmates. Right. But, you know, if you go to Bullock County and they make that surf older than Nelson, it's not too far there. So I'm just making sure these, these were on the 35. Yeah. Oh, okay. 35. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I appreciate you. I think we'll still have a contract with Shelby. Just, just in, in case. case. Everybody's <laughs> full and we ain't got no place to put them. Because I'm not taking them home with them. My just, wife just, just, <laughs> just in case there's no room at the end, right? Yeah. That's what I was telling well, I appreciate you putting this together. That uh, they are trying to pass a uh, it's House Bill 12, where they're going to limit the number of new jail beds they can put in Kentucky. So, I mean, where are you going to put them? <laughs> we'll turn the list. So, uh, yeah, but don't get locked up. But we'll <laughs> we'll get uh, as we as we we move along and we get those contracts and we, when we get them, get them all uh, lined up, I'll we'll present them to you and tell you. Tell you what we got all together. So, uh, but anyway, that that's all. Just wanted to present that. Thank you. So that's got all that good deal. That was really some good information. Oh, uh, anything, anything else, Daryl? Uh, all right, got you covered. All right. Uh, next is the communications from citizens. If anyone in the audience would like to address the court, uh, this is the time. Yes. I saw a hand over here. Um, or go ahead. Gotcha. Uh, I come up? Yes, please. Introduce yourself. Hold it. Yeah, yeah. John. <laughs> yeah, John John introduce yourself. Good evening, Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Tom Walters. I used to be a Commonwealth attorney in Bowie County. I was a county attorney and had to, had to resign because I decided to live in Spencer County. So I had a farm over here, and when I when it came here tonight, I was just to thank the judge and the magistrate who looked at a road that we contacted you about. And like that, I've lived over here for a few years, but I've had the farm for about like 40. So the road has gotten in disrepair. The magistrate and the judge did a wonderful job getting it to where it's passable. 
The only thing I'd like you to do, if it isn't already done, was to see if you put that on your road list, because it really needs to be a resurface. And I think the manager looked at it, he realized that before you resurface it, you may want to try to put a few ditches down the side of it, because if you have a road that dumps all the water on it, it's, it's not going to last. But the county did a good job at this time of year for what they did. Uh, I'm not going to complain. You can get out without uh, beating your tars completely flat. Uh, but again, I don't know what your road program looks like. I know the manager said something about Mago uh, being behind, which they're always going to be behind because of all the work they do. But uh, is there anything formally I need to do to ask the court to put that on a well, pay list? What road is that? Snyder Road? Snyder. 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 Yeah, part of it, the, the 48 side was the one that was really bad because it gets the traffic. There's about eight families that use it. And then uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers, who has a farm behind us, runs, runs the dairy there. But the road is held up well because the county paved it probably, I'm going to guess, 15 years ago. And from that point on, I don't think it's ever had a second full coat put on. So it's got a pretty good base under it, but after so long, it, it will not hold up. Well, I'm, I'm learning how this job operates. Yeah. I'm in the 14th month. 15 months ago. I know you are. But uh, there's, a, there's several lists, and we've put lists together, and last year we put together a discretionary list. All right, how discretionary works is they contact District 5, and District 5's engineers supposedly, I guess they come look at our roads. I don't know if they look at them on Google or if they actually come and walk and ride and look at the roads. So nothing on our discretionary list passed the bad road test. <laughs> they, they got a grade of like a 9 or a 10 right. to be funded on discretionary list. And I spent yesterday afternoon uh, riding around up in Wheels District uh, in a whole area. And by golly, they didn't, one of those roads was on the discretionary list last year. They didn't go look at it. Right. The, the front part is pretty good. The back part is terrible. And I'm going to try to enforce that more. Now that I know a little more about uh, what what I can do, uh, Senator Higdon is our senator on the Transportation Committee. Uh, we even sent in some extra discretionary roads, and none of them passed the yeah, test. I, I doubt the county's going to get much help on roads like Snyder Road that are uh, they're not arterial roads. They're basically private roads. It goes through to Love Lake. Well, it's a yeah, county. It's still a county road. It Still is county, county road, road. And, uh, and I'm thankful that it is a county road in some respects. Sometimes you wonder about that. But uh, again, I do appreciate your all being able to work on it as quick as you did. I mean, uh, it's it's not every day that a magistrate or a county judge will respond to somebody when they contact them. Like I said, I've been around government for 40 plus years, and it's 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 makes me feel better to be in Spencer County when I can send a letter or talk to a magistrate and they actually will take notice and try to assist and help assist. And I, I really appreciate that. But mine is to compliment you, not to pitch at you tonight. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And appreciate uh, I'll be your excuse. Excuse. I'll just go out of your way. All right. Uh, anyone else like to address the court? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Laurie Mills. I was actually here and spoke back in October regarding some issues uh, at the clerk's office. Um, I'm a former employee there. I worked uh, till the middle of January. Um, I actually left there in an ambulance after having a panic attack, after having to work in a very toxic environment and uh, after I came to you and spoke in October, uh, it was even worse. Um, and the, being a toxic environment and what it does to you mentally and physically, uh, like I said, I've had panic attacks. I had to go get medication just to work and uh, decided it just wasn't worth it anymore. So. And from what I understand now, there's um, the longest that anybody has been there that's there now, it's been nine, about nine months. And uh, since last 
April, five people have left the office. And I was so excited to get that job back in April and so disappointed after just a few months of being there and tried to really, you know, stick it out. And the things that I brought to the court's attention, to my knowledge, were not even looked into. So at this point, uh, there could be employees, there's been about 32 now that have left in five years, that the county or the clerk's office could possibly owe because they were having to pay out of their pocket if their money was short. And that is against the law. Um, also, there's a good possibility that the clerk's office and the county owes dealers, dealerships in the rural areas because money was kept that didn't belong to them. So, I personally know that after talking to several attorneys that toxic work environment and especially retaliation, which I did experience personally and do have proof of that. Nothing I said in either meeting was not true and I had public, I have open records report, request reports to prove anything that I'm saying. And I just feel like as a citizen and at that time in October I was an employee that I was really ignored and really disappointed in the whole situation. I'm so glad now that I can say that I have a wonderful job, but if red flags don't go off when you have 30 something people leave in five years and five people leave since last April or May, I'm not sure what else would throw up any flags that there's an issue. So, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the court? All right, we'll move right on. Uh, we don't have anything from uh, zoning tonight, emergency management, Chris. I'd just like to take a couple minutes to uh, recognize uh, my guys and the rest of the responders in the county. I don't know if y'all were made a mass casualty incident this afternoon when a uh, loaded school bus was rear-ended by a dump truck at Elk Park in uh, 155. The bus was loaded with about uh, 28 students on it, nine of which were reporting injuries. Uh, so luckily, it turned out the best they could. No child had to be transported. They were all treated and released to their parents. And also, I uh, thank uh, Mount Washington Fire EMS and Shelby County EMS for sending us each each in these two ambulances immediately. So what could have been a bad afternoon turned out pretty decent. Make y'all aware of that. Uh, Chris Penny, I haven't talked to you about Trimble County. Uh, Judge Ogburn, uh, I know Tr Trimble County is in Kipta with our county and with the district health department. I know Chris uh, was helping with the damage assessments. Yeah, they were hit with a small tornado. Uh, Thursday afternoon, evening-ish. I uh, got a call about 9.30 Thursday night to come to Trimble County Friday morning and do uh, help with the damage assessment team. Uh, my team surveyed about, uh, they broke they broke the, the affected area down into about five segments. Surveyed about 28 or 30 damage structures. It could have been a lot worse. I think, uh, especially the area we were in, it uh, went through like a multi I believe at the time they had 12 or 15 people in shelters at uh, what's the park at the General Butler? Is that, is that right? So one of the one of the same parts. Uh, they, it did uh, affect their water system there. They had a something caused a massive leak, and their uh, their water tower was uh, dropped from a hundred foot of water to like 32 foot over just a couple of hours. We got down to. Uh, 15 or 20 foot, they got some generators on it, trying to get that resolved, but uh, all in all, they, they turned out pretty well for, for the situation. So, uh, 
just he wrote to recovery for them, get Alan put back on it, and doing with all that. You know, I, I've, you know, I, I consider, of course, the fellow county judges, and just like you guys, become friends with magistrates around us. And, uh, you know, when we have these times of needs, having these relationships are really important. I haven't seen you since he didn't want to extend a thank you. Yeah. yeah well, I, I, read, I texted him that night, and I knew he was busy. But uh, but anyhow, when uh, when we have issues, and we have needs, and we have we need help, you know, I, I know they'll, they'll be hollering back at us to offer some assistance. So. And I believe I know last, last, last court meeting about the uh, ambulance order last year. We talked to the, uh, the dealership, and it should be a ready for pickup, he said, sometime July or August is, is tentatively what they have now. We're, we're hoping we can get it in this fiscal year, and that'll clean up our ARPA funds easily, and we're, which we're going to discuss ARPA a little bit here a little later. I think that's going to be a quick check in July or August. True. But Isn't that what we're, 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 we're hopeful. So, all right, any other comments for Chris? Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris, I got your text. I'll get back to you. Uh, next, uh, oh, Parks. I only have one thing on that. Uh, Brian reached out to me about uh, apparent drainage issue that's starting to surface at Great Hill Park, something about the ball fields. And they're, I told him I'd meet with him this coming week okay. and see if uh, well, he can show me what's up, and we'll try to come up with a uh, a plan of action which will probably, which might involve maybe the road park and helping out with a piece of equipment or something maybe. I don't really know, but when uh, when I get eyes on me and Brian, I'll put our heads together and kind of plan of action to fix that. So that'll be forthcoming. Uh, nothing to take action on that. If, uh, do you know if it's the new Ray Jewel or the old Ray Jewel? He talked like it was old because he's talking about ball fields. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't mind while you're over there, look at Ray Jewel 2.0 or something kind of right. problem. There's three wet places. The water runs off of the high school's fields right. and causes a little lake. If we had a, a tile through there, probably had a riser, may need to put a ditch to catch the runoff. But well, okay. if, if we're out there, yeah, take a look at that. And because uh, that, that'll get that in better shape. Well, what we're on parks, uh, I was thinking it, it, it may be a good idea uh, on the Rachel to Oil Park since we don't have anything there now that we may pay a professional to give us a a layout uh, overhead layout of where ball fields soccer fields buildings parking lots roads need to go instead of us just going in there haphazardly saying we're going to put a ball field here okay then we're going to do this here but have a, a plan in 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 force so when we do uh, this court and the following courts down will have a, a plan to go by instead of just taking it off our heads and decided we want to do this because, you know, I mean, parking lots definitely need to be planned. You know, you can't just put a parking lot here or there and then build everything around it. So if we had a, a site plan, you know, if we had to spend a few thousand dollars to have a professional do that, I would say it would be a good idea for, for us to do that and for the Courts down the road. I don't, I don't disagree at all. I don't think we need to hire an engineer for everything we do. I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I think you got a good idea. What if we just start out and find somebody locally that's got a drone, fly over, take a picture, and then we can maybe scratch out what we're thinking, kick it around, and then kick, and then once we agree on something, then we can. Kick it down that avenue. Well, you know, every one of us has the capability of going online to uh, Eagle View, Pictometry, if each one of us got it, and do that with satellite. And you can look on there, you can draw on it, you can measure on it, everything you want to do. You've got it. I mean, we could do that. I mean, you know, but I would rather do that before we get too far down the road of paying that big dollar. That's free. Um, but I think you're. I think there's a lot of merit. What you said, we need to probably try to plan that out when we, you know, to make sure we're not shooting ourselves in the foot later down the road. Sure. Because hindsight's always going to point. You know, I, I think, uh, and, and the reason I agree with this point is we can take uh, as we run into folks and folks that we know when other schools are here, when we run into athletic folks, you know, take them out there and say, hey, we want to turn this into 
into something. I've talked with the uh, the dads. I call them the dads. I was a soccer dad, so they still got soccer dads and moms and all. But talking to some of them around town that have kids that have now grown that used to play, everybody's got ideas. Well, I try to gather them together, and then one day we'll turn it into something, and we we'll need a professional at some point. So, but. I, I think it's a thought process in the right direction. Uh, I want to bring up uh, Ray Jewell. We had a sewer issue that uh, the pump, I don't know what the problem was. But, uh, I told Daniel to get somebody to look at it, and he was going to check with Brian uh, today about it. And then at Waterford, he looked over the, uh, of course, we got some cold temperatures coming in again tonight, 25 or so. And uh, we were looking about running some. Uh, heat tape and wrapping them with the, the hoses going across. He looked about how we can insulate it. Uh, a lot of the plumbing has been patched and patched and patched and patched. A lot of it probably needs replacing. Uh, but, and then it needs to be where it can be winterized. And he talked about looking about uh, getting some heaters, electric heaters, after we do some insulation to where, you know, my thought is we, we don't need that heated and running in late November through, you know, 1st of March. But from 1st of March till mid-November, if we can have it, you know, to where it could still be somewhat usable, that, that'd be a good step, because, you know, April to October, got to be working. But he's gonna look about the things that we can do to, to, you know, get more stretch out of usage with our plumbing without freezing. And I just wanted to let y'all know and all uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it, we'll keep it under budget, and if anything goes over budget, then we'll, I'll bring it to you. So, if you see Daniel out there working or, or catching, talk to him, ask him what we got, what we got planned as, as far as to how to, how to move forward with that, and then same with Ray Jewel, Ray Jewel Park. Uh, so, I just, I want to tell that, any questions or anything about parks? Alright, thank you. The safety committee, Dan? Nothing to report. All right, solid waste, <coughs> Jim. Uh, did we get the ad in the paper for the two people to pick up litter? I know we had, they put it on in deed and stuff. I know we did that. Put what? On, on the, like the internet. Did we hire that? Like a plumbing site. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that that's a good venue. Maybe it's a this type of job, well, most people are indeed are looking for a... Well, it may not have been indeed. <laughs> I did not personally see the ad in the paper, so I don't know. But I know we've got it posted over there on the window. They, they, they printed something out. They put it somewhere. Most people were they looking at But... You know, I mean... Yes, uh, Indeed, like Dan said, that's what people looking for, career. Yeah. And, but, uh, I handed, I handed out to you guys about the uh, sending the letter, making the money back somewhere. Yeah, that. Uh, and uh, while we're on solid waste, uh, if we go ahead and we got to send the check back uh, April 11th for $7,969.29. That's how much of that we didn't use. And I know last year uh, we sent back 14000 something, so we are going in the right direction. Uh, for sure. So we need a motion to approve. We need a motion to approve sending send that back on the letter of payment. Motion to send back $7,969.29 of the letter of payment money. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to send back the $7,969.29 to the state treasurer on the letter of payment of money. Any discussion? I just want to reiterate that that you know we send money back every year the state gives us that's money we're not using <clears throat> and these two people or one person whatever picking up litter you know <clears throat> we could that seven thousand dollars right there we could spend uh a lot of hours out there picking up litter and it's not costing us anything well i learned i think uh, karen and i went to training after our last meeting went to to the solid waste training and I guarantee you that we will not send a dime back next year. Gotcha. All right. We can clean it. When there's dumps on the side of the road, I call the state. Hey, that's on you. Clean it up. 
we can clean it up. If we had an interstate, we could clean up on the side of the interstate. We can pick that up and we can charge to use a skid loader, the trailer, the truck, the man, the manpower, the man's retirement, or woman's retirement, their typical card, all that comes off and you keep up with it and you charge it against the litter bacon. So I got that all figured out. Well, that's good. And I'm going to use it. Dump some things, but just with a normal pickup litter along the, the road. Yeah. You know, we can we can pay them the same thing, you know. And, and, all. and I'll give you an example. There's one on ten sixty six that we're addressing. They had trash cans sitting in front of the fire plug and I think a couch was pitched out there. I got a picture of it. And uh, so and there's there's another place on ten sixty six near the same place. And we call the state about it and I mean, you know, it's not a priority when they're trying to patch potholes and things. So, but we can go gather that up and then we can put it on it. So, I'm gonna plan on doing that. And, and I, I could use the road department or I can use the, the parks guys. I could use the recycle center. That'd be the first choice is the recycle center guys. But uh, we, we'll do what we need. But yeah, I'm not planning to send one penny back no more. So, uh, all right, anything else on the we vote? We didn't vote yet. Have you? That's why I call question. All right, thank you. Vote. All those in favor of uh, sending the money back on the litter abatement, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right. The sanitation district meeting minutes are in your packet on page 31 and 32. I uh, don't have anything to add to that. The uh, Veterans Committee, Dan? No, the only thing that they are going to uh, have another gun raffle, they're going to wrap off a uh, 45 uh, 1911. So I'll be, I'll have tickets, but I don't have the right ticket yet, but I'm going to have those if you, anybody wants to take a chance on a 1911. Sorry. And I will like to uh, say on veterans, uh, our maintenance fella is going to rig up our, uh, professionally, you can go on Amazon and get a kit. bucks to make all these flagpoles out here have a string on them. So then you just climb up on a ladder. Right now you have to climb up on top, take the pole out, hand it to somebody, change the flag, give it back to him. Well, we're going to fix it to where that you'll have a, just like a big flagpole. So we're going to get that taken care of. I do for the Did we ever come up with a final uh, they well, plaques on their well what you mm -hmm. presented I need to get together and, and we need to present here okay of course we voted to allow the folks connected to Spencer County and uh, and Dan and whoever whomever was it uh, Mr. Jack? Jack yeah Jack Burns with the veterans uh, but they they had some language I need to get that together and present it to the court and I think y'all basically it takes care of what we voted to do um, we'll get that taken care of. Don't let me forget, please. The equipment committee, Zach? Uh, the only thing I got to report is I talked to uh, Big Three uh, last week, and our new bush hog should be in around May 10th. That's a year a week or so, but they're saying May 10th. All right. That's all I got right now. We're supposed to be on your lawn on the morning, too. Okay. That's good. Sure. Uh, telecommunications act. Nothing to report. Uh, Corey, administrative code. I uh, hope to have. Uh, hope to have uh, at least for you all to have a chance to review the next meeting regarding an ordinance regarding solar panel farms uh, in the county. So, um, Lord willing, pre compromise it'll uh, be able to get to that. We have it here. Uh, yeah, I think they could tell you say to pay for. Paper, paper, you go solar right now. Uh, maybe, I know that some of the companies have the rebates or tax breaks. I don't know about people calling me asking me about it. So. Yeah. They've seen the ads and things on Facebook. Say that their KUs openly tell them that they'll pay to do it. That's what the, this, there, there was a lot of discussion at the uh, uh, KMCA meeting, and that's, they recommended that. You, you can't tell them you can't come here, yeah. but you can make it so difficult that yeah. maybe they don't want to come here. Did you make it difficult for them? Um, 
I'll have a draft for you all to review. And if you all want to make it more or less difficult, you all can, as the you know, Mike, body, make that decision. One of the meeting the uh, training classes that Mike and I were on, and Lynn was there too, and we discussed about that, that the state does have um, ordinances or KRS uh, pertaining to those, and they're pretty, they're pretty stringent. So a lot of counties have just adopted the state regulations on that. Well, I'll tell you what, I went to one, I delivered some solar panels to a place to farm in Virginia. They put in something. And you talk about taking a landscape and destroying it. I mean, they had 300 acres there, and it was just destroyed. It was just nothing but metal in the middle of it. And I said, ask the guy, I said, what happens like when this is over? Or they have to redo them for whatever reason. He said, then, he said, from his knowledge, then they just abandoned it. And so, Kentucky has a law that you have to, they have to be, they have to bond it for reclamation. But the problem there is, which bond now, and then Kentucky also has a law said they have, they will look at the bonding every five years so that, okay. This, this won't cover it now, so we're going to raise the bond. But the still, rate over five years, the one, of the, five years. one of the biggest issues, they said, is this company builds it, they get the money from the government, then they sell it, and this company will sell it, and then you end up with somebody <coughs> who doesn't have any drill. Well, it's, well <coughs> it's apparently by the time that it changes hands, so it's talked about three or four times, then that person somehow gets lost in the wash, and there's nobody responsible. Mm -hmm. And it's just a legal nightmare. But anyway. All right. Uh, so there is on economic development. Anything on that? Uh, Dan? No. Okay. Building the ground, Will? I don't guess so. Uh, no. Okay. Well, we've got some bids on the paint job and the gutter that we're going to go over here in just a little bit. On page 33, uh, uh, Heritage Hills, I know uh, Corey and I and, and Julie, and we've been in, in some conversations. It says see handout, but I don't have anything. But uh, basically, we're going to get some resolve on that. Yeah. Corey, you have anything to add? Uh, I only think to just request a vote to authorize me to reach out to the developer and then uh, you know, uh, see about uh, trying to expedite the process for them to either do the construction, call in the bond, or whatever steps are necessary. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to uh, authorize uh, Corey to uh, contact the developer at Heritage Hills to take the necessary steps to get the uh, uh, road completed. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right, the bicentennial update. I have uh, last Friday. Uh, we have this citation of celebration, officially, from James Allen Tipton for the, uh, from the House of Representatives. I don't want to read it to everyone, but I'll lay it up here. Anybody wants to see it? Uh, actually, here's a copy, I guess. Y'all can pass around and look at it. I'll pass it. Don't, don't scuff it up or anything. Don't tear it up. But uh, the bicentennial, uh, we, we've got to get... Uh, uh, I know we spoke about it last time, and I'm going to keep it on the agenda as we move forward. But uh, I've had, we've got a lot of interest. I know Miss Lawson was here from the library, wasn't she? Is that her here a little earlier? It wasn't her? Okay. Uh, I know Miss Lawson at the library. I've talked to her. I've talked to several people in the community uh, about different things. And uh, a lot of people are interested in helping. I don't necessarily have anyone in charge, but we have... Uh, Lots of folks that are interested, and where we've kind of landed again is we get a stage, we we get a budget together. Uh, I needed to. Me and Corey had a little conversation about it earlier, about the you know use of the funds. Probably somewhere around fifteen thousand dollars to put it all on. We think, and uh, and but we're working out more and more details. And as we move along, we'll have more and more to talk about it every time. I'll let some messages as far as stage stuff and anchor back here. It's in okay. Don't forget some projects. Yeah. Though. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for getting that. And uh, by all means, when you get them, we'll, we'll start. I, I ain't got nothing here. All right. 
All right, uh, community events of uh, pavilion. We have uh, an additional, a lot of this information is the same information that we've had uh, other than this last one uh, from Hagen Engineering has a price. So I, I, I know this is made to you, Will. Do you have anything to speak to? Uh, I mean, he puts it out there. I just called him a, this is a reputable company that does a lot of work around here. Uh, you know, talking to him a site plan, gave him, send him all the information we have, the sketches of the building and stuff. And uh, if you read this here, you know, you'll see the scope of the work. You know, to me, my opinion, we've been talking about all this forever. Knowing we need a site plan, you get an engineer stamp site plan for $16,500 compared to the thirty or $40,000 we have been talking about. Uh, you know, the only thing is site uh, Hagen Engineering, you know, they don't have core samples. You know, I called the company that they work with, that they run able to get the numbers for tonight's meeting. Uh, so, you know, that does not include that in the $16,500. So I think you had, uh, it was 11500 or more and 12000 on the other uh, quotes that you the core samples. So. I was guesstimated around $7,000, but that's not in writing, so I'm not going to say it would be $7,000, $10,000, or $20,000. Does it be anything to tell the scope of what's mentioned on the scope for Hayden for $170,000? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to include all of that. That's everything you need to get to a contractor to give you a price of doing this site work. So, I mean, we've we've got three we have gotten three bids on this over time, and I mean this is a good this is the best bid, and I'm ready for us to move forward. So I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, hire Hagen Engineering uh, to it do the, two months before they can do this too. Okay. So. I thought we weren't in there to hurry. That we hire a Hagen Engineering to start the process uh, on our site. Yes, yeah, that's, that's my motion. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion by myself, seconded by Dan, uh, to hire Hagen Engineering for the, the fee of 16.5 to start the uh, work on our pavilion uh, location. Any discussion? Hey, Will, on, on the subsection one, of Hagen's dealer says survey fee 2400. Is that we got to do that on top of the 16,000? No, because I told them they already had a survey. Okay, I said that I guess they just put that on there. Or was it, I guess what, my question was, was that included in the 16,000? If we don't need it, then the price is actually lower. I would assume not because I told them we had a survey. Okay, but I didn't ask that question, so I'm not gonna say hey, I think that last not paragraph, yeah, last paragraph that says proposed fee of 16,500 for design work described above, not including survey. So. Yeah, no, I, guess I, read further. Thank you, sir. I did have uh, Jamie Brown come out because we did just have the four corners marked. I had Jamie Brown come out and set some stakes in between because it's a long way across there. And I thought about getting uh, Daniel and the parks guys to go ahead and put a silk fence down that side. We know we got to have a silk fence. Well, see, this $2,400 survey fee, just to make sure everyone's clear. They're going to do this site plan, and then, you know, if you ever show up to a site, you have know, all your survey stakes out there, you know, your cut, your fill, that's what's going to cost you $2,400. You so say we build that in two years or something, you have to have that stake for the contractor. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's true. Or when someone starts, the whole road will be staked, they'll say cut, you know, yeah. two or six tenths or... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain that's what that is. It's for an engineer, your engineer grade points on your site. You have your other on your site, right? Yeah. Go out and put those in. Okay. But we, I mean, to me, we pretty well got to have this, and this this is by far the best price we've gotten. It's, it's easily uh, comprehensible here what they say they're going to do, but this includes. The, the only thing I see is, you know, we. Uh, if, if we have to have those pouring samples, you know, uh, then that's another $12,000 on top of that. If we don't have to have those, then we don't. Right. Well, 
So, but the club nobody's going to make you get those four samples. I don't think. The, ha the the state will make you if it's going to be uh, sales square footage, certain square footage, certain capacity. If the local building inspector can do it, you may not have to have. It. If the state does it, then you'll have to have. It. That's that's pretty well how that works. I know that for a fact. Yeah, well, we'll see what he says. Of course, if you've got to get $12,000, if that's what his four samples on top of this, it's still cheaper than $30,000 here. You know, you know, just now. I mean, well, $1,500. Well, the size on here is $40,000. I was going to say, you want to have any money, $30,000. Because they never had a site in the building. No. If they don't that, it's 40. Amen. Uh, another question is, uh, with planting season coming on, we're not going to break ground during the growing season. We're going to lease that to Wayne Sweezy or to whoever to grow. Uh, I'm not renting. I'm telling you that. No, we, I think we need to keep mowing because I, I plan for us to be out there working. I want it under roof by Christmas. I do too. <laughs> okay, can we vote on this? I'll make a motion to get another roof at Christmas. <laughs> uh, all right, we have a motion on the floor to um, hire Hagen Engineering. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. We move, move ahead with that. The uh, Sweezy land donation, the Corey and I talked. I don't, you may have a little bit to add to that. Um, I mean, no news is good news, maybe? Um, no, there's, uh, talk with, uh, Mr. Sleazy today, uh, I mean, uh, it was late this afternoon, I tried to reach out to Robert Miles, and he was out at least for a little while with the family health concern, so, hope to touch base with them, it's my understanding that strip of land, that 80 foot strip, or by however many feet, um, may have been annexed into the city, so, we'll see, um, where the discussion leads in terms of whether or not that's going to be rectified or if they'll waive the street requirements because their their requirements are different from the counties obviously so um still working towards it and then also i'm going to do get in touch with mr miles going to check into the animal shelter um, water situation I think that was uh, on the burner it's still on the burner but um obviously uh um, Sometimes it's just a matter of connecting with uh, making actual contact with people. So um, that's on the radar, so I just want to provide an update to the other Mr. Miles is a city attorney. If y'all maybe know, if you don't know. Uh, and he mentioned the animal shelter, and we've got the uh, division of water stuff done uh, for the permit, and Mr. White has already been in, and he's ready to get going. The, the guy that's going to build our animal shelter. So I still plan to have that open by the time school starts. Uh, well, we're talking about the animal shelter. You know, we still haven't heard back from the city of Taylorsville about if they're going to contribute. Yeah, that's what Corey just said. It, well, he said I thought he was talking about the water flood, flood zone. No, no, this was, this was about the actual uh, interlocal agreement. Well, either interlocal agreement, depending on what the bond authority allows them to do that, or working out some sort of arrangement to get the water. Not, not the division of water, but the actual what's city, city, city water. water and sewer. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we need a water line coming in and a sewer line going out. Yeah. And that's, we're, we're working on that. All right, that takes care of that. Courthouse gutters, if you look uh, page 53, and it goes through page 57, um, I personally feel the, the first one on page 53 is the best one. It has the, if you look at page 54, uh, I mean, we have some copper gutters up there, and they have some uh, copper uh, products here that they're going to put in, in the job. Uh, I know I talked to Daniel about it, and, and I believe he, we both agreed that that was the best option as far as the gutters for the uh, $8,592 to get the gutters fixed, and we did get three bids. Is the one bid, I, I just want to clarify that the, the, the one bid that you had to add up there, come out to $22,900, that's one bid. Yeah, that's the one bid. Yeah, that's the one bid. Yeah, that's one bid. Yeah, that's the 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 one bid. Yeah
Rock here? It's, it's 6,000, and then to do the windows was like 11.2, and then to build a downspout box was 2,100. So, well, so that might have been, you reckon that, well, I don't know, does that be renting a lift? Of course, it wouldn't be that high. Shouldn't be. And then this, this one on page 57, uh, we didn't think that was a good bid because it's not detailed very well at all. And I don't think that fella got on the roof when he bid it. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, not nothing against him. But I just feel the very best bid is is on uh, page 53. And since we got three bids, we can ask AOC to pay their 51 or 52 percent of this, and we'll have our gutters fixed. Uh, well, I'll make a motion that we approve service services LLC. Um, to replace the gutters for the, for the amount of eight thousand five hundred forty-two dollars fifty-three cents. Forty-three. Forty-three. Forty-three cents. Close. Yeah. Second. All right. We have a motion by Zach, seconded by Dan, to approve the gutter replacement or gutter repair and replacement on the courthouse from Services LLC in the amount of eighty-five ninety-two and forty-three cents. Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you know, when we're spending money on our courthouse, you know, and I think we should, uh, but, you know, we're in line to get a new courthouse renovation coming up here in the, in the next few years. So, uh, you know, I don't think we need to spend uh, tons of money on our old courthouse because it would just, to me, be kind of a waste of money. But we do have to keep it up, I agree. So. How long, you've been just around here a while. How long have you been here in that, Jim? I agree 100% with what you're saying, and I thought that, but... I've heard that since I was a kid. What's your opinion? Will and I have been up there. Zach and I, I have been I mean, up there. Really, they should have been done five years ago. Honestly. I think it should have been done about ten years ago. If the water don't run, the gutters up there right now are useless. They don't do nothing. There might be two or three gutters up there do something. The rest of them either jump out on the roof or they don't catch no water. And we got a brand new roof with just holding uh, water on top of it, which damages the roof. But, I mean, Jim Jim does have a good point. Oh, I don't disagree with what he's saying, but the same sense of it is, you know, I what he said, we're, we're going to put a clear rock in a hard place, you know. Yeah, they keep saying we're going to get a new one, but at the same time, we got it. Well, but I mean, we, we got. We, we made an investment on the courthouse last year. We got an insurance check, and then AOC paid their portion. So we wasn't out a whole lot getting a new roof up there. And then... Eighty some hundred dollars here to fix the gutters. But you said they will see the pay part of this, right? They should. They should pay fifty percent of this, so it should be forty some hundred. They should be. We we follow the protocol. And then, uh, of course, in a minute we're going to look about the paint bids and fixing the chips and the cracks and things over there. Well, that's, uh, that's going to be a the ordinance too, right? Well, we we'll, we'll get to that just in a minute. Uh, we may have to add a little to that, but. But regardless, uh, once we get the gutters fixed and we get it painted, we got a new roof on, then I feel we've done our job as stewards of this courthouse while we were uh, entrusted in taking care of it, in my opinion. Okay. So I don't know what else we could have done. All right. Any other discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all. Next, the uh, the painting bids, they start on 59 and they go way on down through there. And I, I tried to look through them. One is quite expensive. The other one's a little cheaper, but still quite expensive. So I was looking at the last one, uh, the Serta Pro, which on your cover page, it had like 12156. It's actually 16209 is what the total price is. But if you look through everything they do, it has, it covers a lot of things. It would probably, when, when they get done, it's all going to look good, but as far as caulking every window, they're just caulking what needs caulk, re -caulk. So, yeah, I think we need to, we're doing it, I mean, look, if you either going to do it or you ain't going to do it, so. Well, I mean, it's, 
Th this one is 16209 and the next one is 44240. I don't know. And the other one is 3250. Yeah. What's it going to cost to replace the windows? Is it going to cost to, what's, what's it going to cost us a year and heat and AC? Well, I'm just saying, pay them $16,000 and then have Daniel cost the rest of the window. I'll need a motion and we go with Certipro Painters for 1620932. Second. All right, I have a motion by Jim, seconded by Mike to go with Certipro Painters at an amount of $16,209.32. Is there any discussion? Uh, one thing I saw that they they are not doing that some of the others they're not fixing any of the concrete issues, chipping at the stairs and stuff like that. So we would ha we'd have to get somebody else to well, hit on somebody that. Somebody like Joe Good would be a missionary person would be probably better qualified than a painter, I would think. And uh, you know, going on the premise that we're gonna. It's going to last for two years while they got a three year warranty, don't they? So we better than it, we better than it. <laughs> well, all I have to say is, uh, kind of to Jim's point, but not even all of that, I know we're going to spend the, no one's going to like what I'm about to say, but we're going to spend $16,000 to make the courthouse look pretty, but I think there's a whole lot of shit over there, $16,000 that you could fix in the courthouse that may not look pretty, but it needs attention. The interior part of the courthouse. Yeah, I mean, you talk about more interior for uh, almost twenty thousand dollars. You put a lot of windows in that courthouse. But so you go back to you know we're going to get a new courthouse. But if we get a new courthouse, we just spent twenty thousand dollars. Well, uh, hopefully we can get half of this back too. So I see that going not as good as well, we got it. But I'm not going right. to disagree. But we did get three bids and we advertised it <laughs> properly. So. It does say in here though that they are, and none of them are going to clean the windows. But this this service, they do offer an additional service of cleaning the windows after they're done. I'd like to look into yeah, if we choose because the windows are going to be pretty nasty after they're finished. Well, I, I just don't see either too how we got one for sixteen thousand. Everyone else is upper pros or independent. Well, now, now, there is one difference. Where my office is, I'm not 100% sure that it's going to paint it, but the other did. Just the front part of where I'm at. But that's, I think that's where the big discrepancy is in the prices. I just wouldn't think, too, that your office would make up that difference. The front of it. Well, I don't disagree. You know, that's just why I wonder if we're getting a quick. Because I was looking, I was looking at their. Is this a Jiffy Lube paint job? If you read their warranty <laughs> and stuff, though, I mean, it, they have a good warranty. I uh, use Servo for. I mean, yeah. they are all independent contractors. There's no service from the company. Like <coughs> well, I'm just thinking that you, if Jim, you know, projecting, you know, if you're talking about doing the whole shebang, you know, five, six, ten years down the road, how much, you know, you want to. How much do you want to dump in it now? Or you just want to do this kind of like a quick one so spruce it up a little bit and go on down the road and get you by our that's y'all I want the court house look nice watch it play. Y'all tell me the last time it was painted. I don't know. Franklin Barnett painted it probably fifteen years ago. It was it was probably longer than that. Because I remember Doug's daddy, Leroy Williams, telling the story that he was laughing at Franklin. Told him he should have just put paint on him and hooked it, slid down the poles. <laughs> I think it was painted during the David Jenkins and the other I don't remember now who it was. 15 years ago. All right. All right. We'll move on. We got a uh, motion on the floor and a second. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. The. Uh, ARPA resolution, we don't have to vote on this tonight. If you see this, I'll pass it around to you guys. That's when the last court decided to put uh, funds into uh, broadband from ARPA. You see it was dated on 2021, and, uh, and basically it's not necessarily exclusive to anything, any one company. It's just exclusive to broadband. And... Uh, as since we're coming up on the time where ARPA needs to close up out, uh, 
uh, we would like to be able to close it out sooner than later and um, this is just for consideration we don't have to decide but I, I, I may what are y'all thinking you want I mean are something else oh, okay. I think we, we can use it at the pavilion we can use it lots of places uh, I'm not saying that we don't do broadband either I think we were to look into that a little further because that's right I was on the court when we did that and I think what they're saying is true but maybe not totally have all the facts there yeah I think we were just well looking because I think it was set for broadband I think it was set for an individual company all right well yeah we'll check into it but but anyway this is the resolution that was passed yeah but so, uh, the spectrum had a presentation there they just got awarded several tens of billions of dollars from the state to and they said to, to expand broadband throughout the whole state so that's part of what those maps you handed right. out they're looking for where where do we need to go to do this so and then, on the previous court that we did that i can't remember the company's name but they did a presentation uh, a couple of different times uh and that was for them they were going to collect millions of dollars from all the state too. Shelby Wire, all, all, all points. Used to own Shelby Wire. I, I can't remember the name of it now. It was all points or true points. No, not true points. No. Oh, man, points I don't know if you remember, Lynn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it may have been all points. Yeah, I think it's an all points but, problem. But that company came in here and we gave us a presentation and we agreed to go, you know, they were going to. They were going to do all the paperwork as far as getting money from the state and from us. So just yeah, the, the, the need for broadband, and I want the community to know, brief, the need for broadband has not gone away. However, the federal government and the state government has continued to fund it, which is great. And and you all done the previous court did the exact right thing by devoting funds to it. And it's kind of like the uh, the fellow that came to us that we went up to the uh, boat the uh, pavilion that day and had that presentation of another another kind of technology to try to expand and they're still working on it they're they're working on getting bugs out and and they they would like to have some of this and in our decisions as to what we do if we if we want to keep some of this to help them we can still do it. But I just basically I bring it up just to get our keep the conversation going because that by the end of this calendar year, all that money needs to be in a hole. It needs to have a check written for it and needs to be gone. I have company needs to be gone. No, it has to be gone. It needs to be earmarked by the end of 24 and completely spent by the end of 26. Well, they're telling you different now. Uh, Jennifer from Kipta that, that's taking care of handling it. That they want a check. She says you need a check written because there's agents looking to claw it back. You need a check written by the end of this year. So well, that should be a problem for us. Yeah. But we got to decide. Well, one of the differences, Jim, is that Spectrum has been awarded that contract now, and plus there's uh, some other smaller companies that got a portion of it too. But money's already been said. You're, here's your money. Do it. Where before it was just a, a thought that they might get money. Now they've got the money and they've been awarded the contracts. So it's different. Well, my understanding was that any company that uh, that wanted to come in and do broadband in the county had to go through the state to get that state money and they had to go through all the paperwork and, and whatever that entailed for them to get that money from the state they just didn't get it to them no well i know they spec they had a number they said this is how much money the state gave us that we're going to put broadband in all these counties well, and well this company that came and did the presentation when we gave them that five hundred thousand said the same thing they're going to get 10 million i think it was 10 million from the state to do their part and they're that's two years, two, three years ago. They should be ready to start up. You know, they're part of it. So whatever, whatever the company was, we may have to look back on it. But, but you know, just you know, you you all think about how the best way we need to handle that. That's why I brought it up. Uh, we don't have to act on it tonight. Right. I think we ought to do uh, similar to what we did before with with the pavilion money and stuff. 
figure out a way to spend that money and put the other put some money back aside. We got that figured out. Okay. Well, that's part of the reason why this is on here tonight. Jennifer's contacting us wanting to get it spent so that she can close it out. Well, we get audited by the federal money on this, and the sooner we close it out, the sooner this is like this fiscal year, we know we're going to have an audit on this Arkham funds. But that's where if we spend that money on salaries and other courthouse expenses which like any of the other, which we've been doing, it doesn't mean we can't still leave that money earmarked in the general fund budget for bug ban or using it on the pavilion or the animal shelter or whatever. You is know, is the, this money ear, uh, encumbered on our on your budget that it can't be spent except for We've got two things money. that there's purchase orders for on right now. The ambulance is one right. which they're getting ready to start working on and then the bug balcony. Yeah. So we can't spend that unless we go through a process of getting it. We resend that resolution unless we want that money. Well, we re we resend this resolution, and then we can basically keep going what we do with our general fund expenditures. That's one reason on the jail budget why housing looks so low. We spent our jail bills a whole lot of them went against the Arbor money. It was general, I mean, that was the expenditures that we could collect. Yeah, it's not, not like we didn't pay it. We paid it, but we paid it out of the ARPA to use it up. Mm -hmm. I, I know that Jennifer sent out an email, and it's something shy of three million that we have utilized. Like, remember, we voted on we're going to pay for this to free up this money. And uh, it's something shy of three million. Well, ARPA was 3.8, 3.7, 3.8. So you've got 500 and then 204 for the ambulance. So you got 704. So it's it's right there. So so we have to free this money up. Yeah, we we re if the we if the quicker we can cl can close this out, we could use it. We could do it in two months, paying for salaries and things. Because I mean, salaries are how much a month? Two fifty. Uh, yeah, you do. So if we went to March first, we could probably do it if we voted to use. Right. Salaries and other expenditures for March first going forward, and I think we'd have to spend up no problem. But do we know that we can legally resend this resolution? I don't think we do know that. Yeah, well, I would make that motion, but if we don't know that, then we well, have to be done. Let the uh, court can look into it for us. Court can look into it for us. I mean, we, we can do it. We don't have to do it today. Make sure this burner is lit up on high. Oh, yeah. Turn her over to high. No, it's on my. Alright, alright. So, uh, so that, that's it on that. The uh, Kentucky Works Agreement, I've got in here, I think, somewhere. And we're, we're about done. Uh, basically, uh, what this is. Uh, I know why we didn't do it last year because it's a two-year deal. Corey and I were discussing this two or three hours ago, and it's uh, we, we uh, have to agree. Basically, we're not uh, putting ourselves in a corner by no means, but the uh, seven counties have to participate. Uh, I knew I would flunder, flunder this how I wanted to say it. Basically, the Kentucky Works uses federal money and when the grants came to come available to uh, do what their mission is, if we're a participant, then we get to participate in getting the grants. So basically this is, and I'm not sure that we would even have to vote on it, but I'm, I'd like to ask you all to vote on most everything that we try to do. So well, how much money that was? Nothing. They don't want no money. They want, to let, they want us to nominate somebody. Well, they, they want us to participate, us and six other counties participate in the, in this, uh, in Kentucky Works, and that way we would become eligible to uh, to participate in these uh, this grant funding. And this this is run by the Education Workforce Development Council. Didn't we do this last year? And then this is continued. This has been going. And, and we pretty much came to the conclusion that probably Oldham and Jefferson County probably get the first pick of everything. 
that was GSI. That was GSI. Oh, okay. Or GLI. Greater Louisville. It's like 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 Okay, well, I'll make a motion that we uh, enter into agreement with the uh, uh, Kentucky Animal Work. Kentucky Animal Work. Okay, so this is motion to say that we're choosing you to be our chief local. Yes. Okay. okay. Sure. Second. All right, I have a motion by Jim, seconded by Mike, that we uh, enter into an agreement with Kentucky Animal Works and that the county judge be the uh, part of the chief, chief official's Press. name on the documents. Yes. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 You want to oppose? Motion passes. Next, Chris, Robert. I was wondering why y'all were hanging out and then I saw that one toward the end. I appreciate y'all bearing with us. Look at the end. Uh, in your packet, there is a, there should be a cover sheet to hire a new set. Uh, yeah, say that last time. Yeah, it actually says all I. All I. All I. All I. All I. You self L. Allow you. Can we just call it Tom? Call him Yusef. Yusef. Yeah. I'm going to call him Yusef. Uh, I guess yeah. he, he doesn't go by the middle name. Just the first <laughs> and last. <laughs> yeah. okay. I hope so. Y'all got enough shirt to put that name on there? Hey, you, you know, <laughs> he, he doesn't use that middle part at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're, we're very has, happy happy that fellow's interested in coming to work for us. He has already passed his uh, background check and drug test. So his hiring requirements? His hiring requirements. Yes, so just so you know we're working, we keep saying that we want you to say that. Okay, he's already passed his hiring requirements. So uh, I would like a recommendation to hire you set at fifteen dollars an hour as a full time EMT. So moved. Second. second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike to hire uh, Mr. Youssef Alawali at fifteen dollars an hour for full time uh, EMT. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, thank you. This uh, emergency road aid request, um, I just I want to put these in here. Uh, you, you all, I don't know that you had to vote on these. Did y'all usually vote on these again when y'all did them? Uh, I don't remember if we voted on them. Do so we need to vote on them, Corey? Um, uh, come on, man. Basically, I mean, we, we can do it. We, we, we put in a request. Uh, Todd sent all this in, and Karen typed it up. If you, if you see that on page 79, uh, it, it tells how it works out. It's an 80 20 program. One of these projects we put on FEMA, this page 80 was on FEMA, and they were giving us uh, some grief about it. They didn't want to pay for it. So we decided to go ahead and stick it on this. The way this works, you go ahead and you can do the work first, and then they'll reimburse you for the portion of it. All right. This uh, on page 81. If you go up Yoder Tipton, Jim, I'm sure you've seen this. When you cross that bridge on Yoder Tipton, the bank washed out on the left-hand side, really bad. And they're going to build that up with blocks and probably and put some signs and things on it. So. These two projects, hopefully we can get in. Uh, they'll pay up to 80000 or a portion of up to 80000 So maybe we can get these to qualify, and I was going to send these off. Okay. Now, this, don't quote me on this, but I believe the way that 80-20 bridge money works is what it's called. Uh, that's annually. We, can only, we don't only get, it, uh, only get it one time a year, uh, the 80-20. Uh, and because... The reason I say that, uh, I put in on Washburn Lane, and you knew Washburn Lane. I put <laughs> right it in here at Lane. Washburn <laughs> Lane, uh, that we've got a washover on, on Washburn Lane, right? New, the new intersection at Hope Structure where they're, they're rebuilding right now. They're in the process of digging that old intersection up. And that washover is just 100 feet down the road from it. So what I would like to do is add Washburn Lane that, that uh, because that would that is deemed an emergency. I talked to Greg Codell up at the state that runs this 8020 bridge lane, but and he's saying, but 
you know, you only get it once a year. So, and we used two years of it in the last court on the Elk Bridge. Uh, they let us go ahead and have two years instead of a year, but we didn't get none the second year. So, anyway, but I'd like to add uh, Washington Wayne Washover Bridge on that also if we're going to do these. All right, well, these, I, I really think, and I could be wrong, Jim, but I don't think these are the bridge money because these are the county road aid. Uh, I don't see anything where it specifies bridge. Well, that, but that's, that was just the name of it, maybe. But, right, uh, there is a bridge. There is another, this, this, T, this TC 20-16, I haven't uh, learned all those numbers yet, but that, that one is exclusive to fix the roads, and they have one for bridges. I could do some research. Uh, well, anyway, if you would, uh, I can add that. Into, uh, yes. if we can get that, that wash over. Uh, if, if you would like to make a motion that we apply for these two and the one you're talking about, then I'll make, uh, you know, make that motion. All right. I'll second it. That, that sounds good. Uh, so we have a motion by Jim, seconded by myself, that we go after uh, these two emergency requests and also a bridge request on the bridge at the end of Washburn Lane. Washoe. The Washoe Bridge. All right, any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Next, we have the monthly financial statement. Uh, the bills transfers y'all have any questions on any of the numbers I was just looking at these budget numbers I'd just like to remind the uh, department heads they need to look at these numbers we still have three and a half months left in the year and some of them are pretty close to uh, used pretty, up being <laughs> used up for money a little <laughs> bit more already <laughs> yeah so just a just a reminder that they need to look at them and figure out how they're going to make it three and a half months. Well, I mean, we've been doing a lot of stuff. I know. And they can do it. They do it. Motion to approve the invoices and the transfers. Sorry. I have a motion by Jim, seconded by Zach, to approve the uh, invoices, bills, and transfers. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. We do not have executive session need tonight. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. have a motion by Zach, seconded by Will, to adjourn. This is neither available nor amendable. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Got out a little over an hour. <laughs> little, yeah. over, what? little less than two hours. There you go. Yeah, there you go. We don't worry about your time telling. <laughs> it's all a matter of how you want to look at it. A little over, yeah. an over an hour or a little less than hey, two hours. Hey, you said you had out less than two hours. <laughs> that's still good, right? Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's,